Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. And I'm Tom Scholey. We're big fans of looking at the earliest works of our favorite cartoonists, a lot of Frank Miller uh, talk on the channel. Let's take a look at his first Marvel work. But first, Jimmy, what do you have? Street Angel, Deadly Squirrel Live, available wherever you buy books or comic books. You can also um, join me on patreon.com slash Jim Rugg, where you can see how I made Street Angel, Deadly Squirrel Live. A lot of original art on there, layouts, uh, script and notes on my process for making comics. You can uh, also download about a dozen out-of-print zines and mini-comics when you join me on patreon.com slash Jim Rugg. Tom, what do you have? Here's uh, Fantastic Four Grand Design, the whole story of the Fantastic Four told in one oversized volume. Uh, and here's Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics. It's Jack Kirby's life story told in comic book form, uh, drawn uh, in pencil. And I also have a YouTube channel called Total Recall Show. And check out my Patreon. Go to patreon.com. Search Tom Scholey. Red Room, the Anti-Social Network. Hit the, hit the stores uh, November 9th. Uh, you can find it at your local comic shop. Put in the order at the Fanographics website. Worst comes to worst, you hit up amazon.com. They're holding weight in Red Room Comics. Uh, if you got the issues, I drew, well, I include about 70 pages of extra material, uh, director's commentary, lots of extra artwork, uh, first draft comic of what Red, Red Room could have been. I'm going to do a bigger video on this uh, closer to the day that the comic comes out, but uh, you could get these at your local shop, like I said, man. Uh, also, there's a, neck, a new miniseries going to be coming out towards the end of the year called uh, Red Room Trigger Warnings. Uh, you could pre-order those comics at the Fanographics website. And I uh, serialized those comics on my Patreon. All those links in my link tree in the description below this video. Uh, today we're looking at John Carter, Warlord, Warlord of Mars, issue number 18. Famous comic. If uh, you were reading those Wizards and Overstreet Price Guides and stuff. Uh, because the thing that made this comic blip a little bit beyond the you know $1 price tag of all the other issues is that it was Frank Miller's first, man. And uh, in a day when... People at the flea market didn't have access to like an eBay, internet, didn't necessarily know what they had. You could find this comic. And if you were in the know, you were able to get your hands on it. But now, you know, like the resellers and stuff, they try to mark it up $20, something like that. Uh, always fun to take a look at the early works. Now, this isn't the first published work. That would have been like some Twilight, Twilight Zone, Zone comics. Yeah. Then it was like a little cup of coffee at DC with those weird war tales, one or two issues of that. This is the first Marvel comic that uh, Frank Miller did. And he is the guest penciler, which means he's pa he's pacing this thing out himself, finished off by Bob McCloud, who's like really adding a slickness, real consideration for the lighting and stuff. And whenever I take a look at these kinds of comics, one of my favorite things to do is try to see what kind of Frank Miller can I can I see in there, mm -hmm. if any. Yeah. And honestly, very little. Really? Okay. I saw quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we'll yeah, get I into am. some of it. Most of this story is a fight scene. Yeah. Yes. And so one of the things that I see or I think of with Frank Miller is really good choreography in fights. Yes. So you do get to see some of that choreography in action here with, uh, who's this character? The, the Tar Tar Tarkas. Ma Master Assassin or, or whatever. Um, I like these four-armed characters. Yes. Yeah. And he's got two of them fighting each other, yes. man. That's hardcore. It does seem like a challenge. Like yeah, you to show up with your portfolio, well, just to do it. Okay. Like think how hard it is. Figure drawing one of the hardest parts of doing superhero comic art, and now you're going to get a figure that's wonky with these four arms. Got to figure out where to put those bottom shoulders and but stuff. It's, it's, yeah, he did end up using the forearm thing in Ronin, so obviously something about it appealed to him. <laughs> um, you know, it, it is interesting seeing Miller outside of the sort of genre that w that we know him for, you know, not very much, you know, space opera, especially this kind of like weirdo uh, John Carter kind of kind of space opera, you know. Um. I'm super into uh, Bob McCloud's inking in a lot of ways, man, like where he's really thinking about lighting and just laying on these heavy brushes. Yeah, the double lighting back here, really sharp. Yeah, not not giving you a pure black, man. Uh, this is like, this is like rights and strokes to me, man. It's pretty nice, especially for a fill-in guest penciler, but... Maybe instructed to do so. Like, shine this guy up. He's new. We want our book to look good. Well, I'm thinking, uh, like, this is this feels kind of like an isolated sort of story. So probably planned as a fill-in. Maybe something to kind of keep Some in the hopper. Piece. Yeah, in case in case they they go 
uh, off deadline. You know, they would do that, man. Like the whole conceit of Marvel fanfare was because they just had too many of those kinds of things sitting there. Another Millerism I, I are like these that's... wide panels, yes. which we see a lot of in Daredevil. I, 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 right I want to like take a draw. step back in, in yours, if we can compare, because in mine, there's a lot of these like really wavy thin lines. I don't know if yours has that too. Where? Okay, look. See all these like... Woo, woo, woo. Oh, like yeah, there's yeah, an earthquake yeah. going on. Does yours have that too? Yeah, it doesn't. But that's that's a consequence of that flexographic. Yeah, I don't know if it's... If Can you get that on the screen? Yeah. It's, it's really interesting. I don't know that. if flexographic existed back then or, or this early or not. But it is kind of like bad printing where like the thinnest lines, the plate starts to buckle yeah. as the print... Like maybe you need to like replace the plates... Uh, not get so many pages out of like one plate, but it starts to buckle, and so you get these wavy lines. That's a dramatic difference. Yeah, and you'd almost think, oh, the artist drew that, but it's not. Sure. It's a consequence of the printing technology. I, I remember as a kid, like when it, when Flexo was really in in vogue, and you're yeah. and you're right, this is way it's too like early. Like ten years for that. earlier, or something, um, after this. I remember thinking, like, why are they drawing those? Very. Wait, it's an interesting effect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's so funny to think somebody learns their style, and that's how they're drawing. Dave Cooper, some of his line work looks that way. It really does. Well, uh, the Charles Schultz, uh, you know, have you ever tried to, like, deliberately yes. uh, imitate his, his tremor? Trying to do that right now, as a matter of fact. <laughs> I feel like uh, I feel like Miller's known for drawing good horses after some of the work he did on uh, Dark Knight. And he's, he's, he's flexing that from an early age. Right here, man. That's a pretty cool looking sci fi horse. Extra knuckle in the foot. S in, spider, in the like a spider yeah, horse. And those sort of like, yeah, eight, eight legged Barsoomian uh, horses are kind of cool for comics because you can make almost an illusion of motion, you know, with, with where the different legs are. Yeah, located. it looks good up here where it's running away. That yeah. looks pretty good. That like almost looks like a Sergio Aragone, so Jack <laughs> Davis kind of thing, but like with accurate lighting on it or something. Um, some of the the putting your silhouette in a foreground kind of thing feels a little Miller-esque, yeah. especially like the big fist in the foreground. Boy, nice inking on the uh, on the eyeballs too. Like any of these double lighted places, I feel like uh, McLeod does some nice inking work. This is a badass sequence, man. Where Artaris Tarkas like <clears throat> throws a little sword through a little frog guy and impales him on the wall, and then you have see this is good storytelling flow because now you you know you got this action going on there, got dude entering stage. Stage right. Yeah, I don't know if you guys read numbers one through seventeen of John Carter, <laughs> Warlord of Mars. But how this could does... we do this episode if we didn't talk? without the context? Um, but this does stand out. Like the fight scenes are not anywhere near as cool as what you're seeing here, or as you know, you know, again, something Miller brought to the table. These you know, clearly choreographed, exciting fight scenes. Yeah, and that's the cool thing because because it is Frank Miller pacing the thing out. You know, it's not yeah. just going over somebody else's breakdowns or something. Especially so, when the story is just a too. fight. You know, I feel like that's a good panel, good panel, and there's a lot of good this, art. Like, this would suck to try to draw like four arms <laughs> yeah. fighting another four armed guy. Oh, totally. Like, there's good drama and weight in this stuff. And it's just it's just like you isolate this. I wouldn't think. Frank Miller drew that. that top panel. There's a lot of Miller in that. Some of the marks on the on like the mountain. Yeah, it looks like the stuff he, that he would like hit with the side of the pencil, kind of. Yeah, Jansen would would interpret very differently. Yeah, McLeod, figure this out. You know, I assume, I guess some of that stuff back there is Millerish. Yeah, like just the the whole vertical motion and having like a giant shadow to, um, you know, sort of underline your action. The treacherous four-panel page, hard to compose yes, within. very difficult. Rose to the occasion, I would say. Mm -hmm. And then you get, like, a Miller motif, which is on the cover, of, like, just all these hands pulling you down into, you know, the underworld. It's almost a bunch of daredevil hands. <laughs> <laughs> three three fingers. It's like, Frank, come to us. <laughs> <laughs> it gets exceptional, man, with the lighting and stuff when you see it, like, right there. Yeah. That is sick as hell, man. That's such a good piece. That's This is a dude going for it. Yeah, I, he, I see the Gil Kane in here. Exactly. Yeah, the Gil Kane influence on Miller like wanes as like the Daredevil run goes on, but it's like so there at the beginning. It Like those boots, you know, yeah. the, the figure work. Yeah, it doesn't feel like it's a uh, rush job. No. No, I think he's trying to impress. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. hey, I, I want to be working at Marvel. Let me let me pull out all the stops. And you got to do your cup, like, a cup of coffee at John Carter, man, in order to get <laughs> to draw a Spider-Man someday or something. Yeah, a John Carter fill-in issue, no <laughs> less. Got to start somewhere, man. Look at that. 
Look at that power pose right there. Those uh -huh. legs akimbo. Yeah. Like the Vitruvian man. Super fun to look at this thing, man. This is one of those comics, like, uh, knowing that he, this was his first comic, when I was going to the flea market as a kid, whenever I would see it, I would scoop it up. I got at least five copies, like, floating around here. This is a really nice effect. McLeod does some good work in this issue. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, not having, like, the, the solid line underneath that arc motion, yeah. but having just those, like, bursts stop there. Yeah. That's really nice stuff, above and beyond, for, for an inker to do that. One of the... One of the complaints or criticisms of Miller has been like he's got his bag of tricks and he's just sticking to it to it and not going outside of his comfort zone but here he is like just from the assignment forced uh out, way outside of his comfort zone and it's kind of cool like it would it would be really nice to see him do something that's just you know so different from like what you know his his ordinary I like thing. this panel too a lot with the yes. extreme close up and the figure in the background almost looks like a muscle figure or something like that <laughs> it does you know what's interesting Tom with what you said is you think of like Miller's evolution as a cartoonist and the direction that he goes in where it's like he's almost rejecting the idea of I'm going to make pretty drawings or I'm going to spend the bulk of my time on the drawing part of it uh, in favor of whatever else, yeah, storytelling yeah. or something. Um, but it's interesting to see that progression because obviously uh, that's not the path or the arc that every cartoonist takes. So it was something that spoke to him or he decided this is the more important part or where to put his focus. But you do see him move far away from this kind of... Uh, more traditional penciling style. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, this is the kind of thing you have to do to get in the door, to get, yeah. the, to get the, uh, the editor to give you a shot. And then when you get in the game, you start to change things a little bit, little bit, little bit, and then, uh, you know, you become who you are. I think um, it's, it might be around the same time he does, like, an issue of Captain Marvel. And again, it's like, Miller way outside his comfort zone, you know, cosmic, other planety kind, you know, like Starlin kind of that. stuff. Yeah, it's it's like right around this time too. Do you have that issue? I have it. Yeah, I, I can I can look for it and bring it in. But also worth taking a look at for the same reason, and and um a little a little stronger than that, like a little more Miller coming to the fore in that one. I would like to I would like to see that. You know, we got a lot of comics uh, at the at the studio that uh, are some of your favorite and our favorite. Uh, cartoonist's earliest works. Not going to be the last kind of video we do like this. K Fabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell, we'll notify you when new vids are available. Jimmy, what's out there? Join me on patreon.com slash jimrug. Download out of print zines and mini comics, about a dozen of those available. Check out my original art there, process of how I make Street Angel, Plain Janes, Octobriana at patreon.com slash jimrug. Check out Fantastic Four Grand Design, uh, Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics, and my YouTube channel, Total Recall Show. Red Room, the Anti-Social Network, in stores November 9th. Get it at your local comic shop. Get it uh, from the Fantagraphics website. And worst comes to worst, you got to hit up Amazon.com. Scoop up, this, scoop up this first printing ASAP. They're going quick. Uh, you can keep up with Red Room at my Patreon. I'm serializing the trigger warnings. Next round of Red Room issues uh, over there. And you can pre-order these uh, new Red Room comics at the Fantagraphics website. All these links in my link tree in the description below. What else, Jim? Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. All right, man. Give them those marching orders so we can be on our way. Make more comics. <laughs>